Couple of matches coming up for the U.S. Men's National Team, CONCACAF Nations League, and uh, a spot in Copa America 2024 on the line as well for the U.S. Men's National Team, who will face off first against Trinidad and Tobago on November 16th, and then uh, a couple days later on November 20th. So a uh, couple of big matches, not as much in terms, Ian, of uh, the opponent and the quality of the U.S., the heavy favorites to win in both of these matches. But I think for U.S. fans watching this team in the ramp up to 2026, it's just another opportunity to learn more. Now that we know that Greg Berhalter is going to be the manager for this team going forward, learn more about what the U.S. have and how much better they're getting as they build to a very, very important World Cup happening on American soil. Yeah, spot on, Ali. I mean, that's exactly where I'm at. But let's not forget that there are a lot of players who are in this squad who are in very difficult situations with their club team right now. So I'm really intrigued to see how they handle this situation. I mean, we can go through the roster from Matt Turner situated at Nottingham Forest, losing his place in the Premier League to try and get back into that team. We can move to Cameron Carter-Vickers at Celtic, who's trying to win success at the top of the table. Dest, who's finding his form at PSV Eindhoven. Joe Scali, who's been excellent for Borussia Mönchengladbach, most recently watched his game at the weekend. He was absolutely fabulous. Gio Reyna going through a controversial time with Borussia Dortmund, where for some reason he can't get minutes at Borussia Dortmund, certainly not enough minutes to be able to be happy and competitive. Weston's doing great. Yunus Musa's doing great, albeit Milan are going through their struggles mm, right now. He didn't have the best game subbing on uh, for AC Milan, but no, no, on the but, whole. But still very, very good season so far for Musa, where we didn't expect him to play yeah. a lot of minutes, and he's done incredibly well. Up top is probably where the biggest questions are, and I'm intrigued to get your thoughts on this one. You have a Brendan Aronson who's in the roster who can't uh, get a consistent starting place at Union Berlin, who can't seem to win a game. Let it go in that. They can't even score a goal right now, Union Berlin. So it's not necessarily turned out to be a great move away from Leeds United in the Premier League now Championship mm -hmm. to uh, Bundesliga and Union Berlin. F uh, Balogun has made a great move to Monaco. Excellent move. Um, but goals, we'd like to see a bit more goals from him and a bit more productivity in front of goal. Then you've got Kevin Paredes, who did incredibly well, scored his first goal this weekend. I thought he was absolutely fabulous. He got a good goal. Even the many people out there would say it was a tap-in, I would say it was a bit <laughs> of sk a skill and quality. Pepe, of course, will have his questions as well. So I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts as to where you want to see improvement from this group because to me it's across the board. Yeah, absolutely. I think you can look at top to bottom every position group with this team and say there are there are question marks here. I think what's really unique about these upcoming games and the, is the fact that you're missing Christian Pulisic who's injured and you're yep. missing Tim Weah who is injured as well. And the wings have been a, an area of strength for this team, perhaps two positions where there was not as much of a question. Those are two of the first names on the team sheet for Greg Berhalter, no Christian Pulisic, Tim Weah. How do they... How do they account for their absences, number one? And the player I'm most interested to see how that affects is Flo Balligan, a mm -hmm. player who hasn't had as much opportunity to play with the United States in this core group of players. Yeah, that's a good point. And there was, there was a lot of, um, you know, criticism from Greg Berhalter after that loss to Germany. Really disappointed that Flo Balligan wasn't getting as many looks mm -hmm. uh, from the players around him. And, and so now, you know, as... He, Flo Balligan's trying to build chemistry. He doesn't get an opportunity in these two games to do so with the likes of Christian Pulisic and Tim yeah. Weah, who are going to be the starters. But how how does Balligan still take steps forward with the U.S. men's national team? No, that is what shame. I'm going to be looking to see. That's a shame that he doesn't get the consistency of having the, the real creators important. around him. I will say this though about the Germany game, though. I was frustrated because he made some incredible runs in that Germany game where Christian was a bit more selfish. And okay, Christian scored a wonder goal. But I'd like to see... Um, the aggression, I like to see the determination that, that Balo pr brings. He is someone who's hungry, he's a goal, he's a killer, right? Mm -hmm. Give him opportunity, let him miss a couple, let him score a couple, whatever it may be. I'd continue to feed him because he is a goal scorer, he's got that killer instinct and he needs that confidence within the ranks. There's a lot of young players obviously yeah. in this group as well. I'm intrigued to see and I was obviously very intrigued to hear Greg's comments going into this one. These are big games because you want to compete in major competition Absolutely. next year. 2024, you have the Nations League and then you have obviously Copa America to look forward to and that's why these games are very important so players need to step up. But our objectives is to put players in the right position so they can make an impact based on their skill set. That tells me he's not going to tinker around with Which the squad. It's interesting got, because you are, and that's been a big question. Yeah. Do you put Gio Reyna on the wing in this game, or do you keep him in his more natural yeah. uh, midfield position solely for that that point that we were talking about earlier of consistency with yeah. Flo Balogun? Do, where do you 
I would, I would say this is your opportunity to try some new things. I with the don't absence disagree. of Christian, with the absence of Tim, I would try two or three different things. I still think he will, Greg. I think some way he's playing nice with the media mm, right now. Yeah. Um, and he has to, obviously. Keeping the cards close to his chest. Yeah. It's going to be interesting, though. I think there's a lot to look forward to. We didn't even cover uh, the defensive side no. or, or the, the sixth position, which is. Well, been it's a probably because they're not going to have to do too much defending over these two games. I'm just going to throw it out there. Yeah. It's about what they do offensively. I can't see Trinidad bringing too much over these two games at all. Just don't I, see it. I, I think the U.S., we need to see some. some dominant score lines yeah. in these two I'm with you on that for one. sure. So uh, those matches coming up and going to be exciting ones as we continue to look forward to 2026 with this U.S. men's national team. Becoming